Welcome to James Wade's Webinar Wednesdays. Today is a special feature, and we're going to be going over our new hatchery management software, Hatchcom 4. A lot of you will be familiar with Hatchcom 3, maybe even you had Hatchcom 2 in your hatchery. Um, and we're proud to present our newest version. Um, just for anyone who is new, not sure we really have anyone new today. Actually, maybe we do. So in your upper left corner is your control panel. You have audio and video settings there. You can use those uh, if needed. You also have a Q&A box. That's a great box to send any questions. They'll pop up right here on my laptop uh, for Curtis and I to answer for you. There's also a chat button. You can use that to chat as a group. You can always use that to chat to us, the panelists, if you have something you kind of wanted to submit outside of the question section. Um, and then there's a raised hand button. You can use that if you have an urgent question um, or you want to see something on a screen you notice something that you want us to you know go back to really quickly so that being said i am joined today by curtis lipinskis uh, a lot of you will recognize him if you have the james Bay guardian hvac controls or from our uh, previous hatchcom 3 webinar five things you may not know about hatchcom 3. that webinar is on youtube um, and it goes over a lot of different things uh, in Hatchcom 3, but also some things that will roll forward, like the use of screen reports, the use of the graphs. Um, those features are still there. They're uh, somewhat unchanged. Some of them have been augmented a little bit. So you can also refer to that for basic operational instruction on Hatchcom 3 um, and also in Hatchcom 4. We won't be going through that sort of stuff today. We're really going to highlight mostly um, the new and exciting features that Hatchcom 4 brings. Um, myself, one of my favorite things about Hatchcom 4 is the new look, and I really can't wait to show it to you guys. Uh, Hatchcom 4 has been updated to essentially match our Platinums, so if you don't have Platinums, uh, the icons won't be as familiar. But uh, for anyone who has Platinums, it really matches your touch screen, it matches the feel, it matches the look, um, which makes it really exciting. Uh, so that being said, I think we'll go ahead and put Hatchcom up and let Curtis take the wheel here. Uh, to walk you through this software. Chris? Okay, so we're at the, the Guardian main screen here. You notice it's quite a bit different than it was before. This one populates with the hatchery layout right away as soon as you open it. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll have access to all the same functions you had in Hatchcom 3. It's just easier to navigate some of the common features that most people use are just a one button click up here in the top toolbar. So like we talked about in that first Hatchcom webinar, your screen report and your alarm report would be those first two buttons there for quick and easy access. So I guess uh, we'll go over the screen report, things that have changed in the screen report. Uh, everything now opens in it, its own separate window instead of being integrated into the one Hatchcom window so it's easier to move back and forth between them. Uh, you'll see you no longer have to go into any menus to, to change the settings you want to see. If you want to not see chicken incubators, single stage, you can turn them off here, multi-stage. You can change the columns you want to see change colors, that's another thing. It's, it's color coded for easy recognition. Like if you, if you start having a lot of information and you're scrolling through it, it's hard to know what column you're still on. You can show all the columns. You can hide anything that doesn't have any data. So if we just selected HVAC, it doesn't have a lot of the stuff like a temperature, so if you wanted to print off a report, you can just hide the empty columns and, and print directly. That was another thing a lot of people didn't know. You could, you could save all these things as XLS spreadsheets. So they added a button up here to make it easy. You can just save the spreadsheet. Everything, the screen reports, the statistic reports, the alarm reports all have that same print feature and the save to a spreadsheet. That's really great if you want to share information with other people in your organization who maybe don't have access uh, directly to your hatch call. Maybe they're not at your specific hatchery. Um, 
or if you just want to keep some records of certain things, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, so the alarm report, again, much like the, the, the screen report, but this one is just specific for alarms. You can, without all this excess navigation that was in Hatchcom 3, you can quickly turn off alarms you don't want to see. You can deselect them all, so you can see just high temperature alarms or whatever. And on the side here, if you have machines configured for more than one room, you can turn off and view room at a time. Specific machines. Uh, select different dates, nice little calendar that pops up. Uh, another one is and have the ability to change fonts. And then we can zoom in to make the fonts bigger if you wanted to do a print. Always nice. So yeah, once you once you would select a new date, you just have to do a refresh. And then it'll pop up that information. It doesn't do it automatically. Perfect. Statistic reports, again, it's a lot it's a lot like the um, screen report, just more detailed information. You can do the same thing, hide the empty columns, choose the dates, save. Okay, so that's a nice report. It gives you your minimums and your maximums over that time period. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I don't uh, think I've seen that before. This one is the newest one. What's never, never around before, this is the maintenance feature, which yeah, hold on. Jumped up on my other screen. There we go. Yeah, so this lets you set like a reoccurring task or preventative maintenance tasks. There's a bunch of them that are already set up based on machine type. So if we you can see here, check sensor calibration for an incubator would happen every set starting on, and then you, you pick the date the first time it would happen, and then every set after that it would populate. And just push that power or just turn the button. power button on for whatever, whatever ones you want to see. Uh, you can you can always restore back to the defaults, which is basically just turns everything off. And if you change any of the names or any of the frequencies or the unit types, it just sets it back to a normal. Right. And then you have that add task button at the bottom so you can yes. put in something custom so if it's maybe even has to do with your automation or maybe you want to put in a task for um, changing the filters on your rooftops i don't think i saw that there as a no, that's as a default task um, you know you can you can use this to manage the maintenance throughout your hatchery yeah, not just, just your the, incubators and hatchers that's one of the unit types too we'll see here hvac and if you add a task, actually add it. <laughs> Just turn some on. But now I can see the new task. It's supposed to, uh, the color coding here tells me when it's due. Red means it's past due or it has to be done today. There's yeah. also a yellow, which would be it's due in the next week. So if I were to come in and see turn on. Yeah, so that's all that's all the incubators that are due now, but I can change to view a month's worth of data. And you see you still have the same tasks, but they're not they're not color coded. Can, you can use, you can select multiple tasks. You can complete them if they're done. Oops. And you can always go back and view completed tasks. It always, if you don't assign a person to the task, it'll default to whoever's computer name is who gets assigned to the task. Looks like I'm going to be busy. <laughs> Call-out feature, this basically remains the same. The biggest one is the contact list has expanded up to 10 people from five, I believe. Yes. I think that was mentioned in the first webinar. 
back in Hatchcom. Yeah, that that was a request in our in our first webinar um, from some of you, and uh, we talked to the designer of Hatchcom for, and we got that put in for you. So you now have ten uh, ten callouts. You can choose phone or email for them. Um, we also have that. Uh, Schedule. Scheduling, schedule. so you can even or odd week the person, um, you know, and if they go on vacation, you can just pop in and turn the power off on their on their name there for uh, yeah. for that week or yeah. whatever you need. Yeah, change the data that way. Okay, now on to some of the edit layout features. The one, the one that I really like. It's a, it's a new room feature, which lets you add like a, a custom zoom mode. Because I think it's hatcheries, like some of the hatcheries are getting larger. Like if you look at some of them with like a hundred machines and then they have the ventilation integrated, you get this giant layout on one screen, you can't see anything and it's hard to navigate around. So there's this room feature so you can have a snap zoom or you can even do it to uh, a machine if you wanted to. We just make a zoom box, save it. And then if you double click, it zooms in on that room. Double click again, you can go to the machine. Or if you double click on the yellow, I don't know if it's showing up well, it'll go back to the previous zoom. Or same with the machine. Oh, yeah. Embedded feature. <laughs> so, so now if if you zoom in far enough on the hatchery layout on a machine, it will pop up with the embedded view, which is a replication of what appears on the touch screen, and it operates just like you would be, just like if you were at the touch screen. Some of the some of the features still can only be accomplished at the touch screen, but. Let's you. I don't know. So we can, we can change our set points. We could start a profile. Yeah. Um, you can acknowledge alarm, silence alarm, bypass alarm, turn on the lights. Always good. But like there's other things like when you're at the touch screen, you do a graph. It opens up a graph on the touch screen, but instead here, it'll open up. Yes. Yeah. I think everyone over there can see. You just can't. Sorry, the windows keep popping up on my other screen. There we go. Yeah, so it's just instead of the limited graph that you would see at the touch screen, it just uses the Hatchcom tracked data or right. uses the database. Right. That's another one too where there's been improvements on the graphing. Because normally if you didn't want to see something or if you wanted to isolate, you had to go in through a bunch of menus. But now everything is just right on the main screen. So if I want to zoom in. Data. There we go. There we go. If I can zoom in, I can turn off things I don't want to see without having to go in and navigate. I can pick specific dates. I can I can change colors. I can add events mm -hmm. or view view events. These are okay. just easier to navigate, I think. Definitely, so all those definitely menus easier. You have to go through. But just like before, if you, you can also right click on any of these and it brings up the ability to jump to the alarm for this specific room, numeric reports, you can zoom out, go to the set points of our machine state. And there you see the uh, the platinum integration really right. So now the machine state screen really is your platinum screen, making making it a little bit more smooth. Yeah. I think a little bit easier to understand, and and as a whole, everything is a lot more graphical than uh, than language based, um, which makes it good if you do have a few different you know people with diff speaking different languages in your facility. And jumped out of place there for a yeah. second because yeah, right. the zoom. I forgot about that zoom embedded. But if you if if you're not a fan of the embedded feature, that can easily be turned off in the preference menu. 
you just turn off embedded. When, if you, when you switch between embedded and non-embedded view, you have to restart hash count. I'm just going to do that right now. How does that do that? Back into the edit layout. This is the one I like the most. So if I say I added a guardian panel with more, and I added more rooms, I can go in and I hit the configure button. You can see it found more rooms. I can just go ahead and just pick some names. When I hit OK, it automatically adds those to the layout, so I don't have to. So now you just go somewhere. Configuration and layout all, all happen at the same time. So I can add. That's another one too. The anyone that's worked on the layout before in Hatchcom 3 knew when you when you selected something, there was no edit points. So you'd have to move your mouse until the cursor changed, and then you know. So now we added a highlight feature with the edit points, so it's to change the size of boxes way better. And we can still import a picture. I know some of you have uh, layouts of your hatchery kind of in behind as a background, yes. right? That still add, exists. Add background image. Mm -hmm. um, nice and easy. So that's also something you can do, you know, at a later date if needed or even yeah. as you expand, you know, put that on there. <laughs> Can be like logos to logo for sure. If you wanted to brand it or whatever. You can. There's an auto. You need you to hold control for me. I got control. Now there's an arrangement as well, so I can auto arrange things and it aligns them up. So if I want to arrange them in panel number up and down. Ten will stack ten things in one column. Right. So if I wanted to make this a two by two column, just select two down. Okay, and there it makes a two by two column. Great. That's ordered. easy. Yeah, it's just little little things like that that make it like some people like to change their layouts and it can be it's a lot easier in this one. Now I know it adds the machines automatically, but if there's a communication alarm, it's not gonna automatically remove a machine. Have to physically go and delete it. Once you delete it from the layout, it, it deletes it from Hatch Common to go out and pull that machine. So it's right. kind of like a configuration control and the layout control. If you make any changes, you can, you can always exit without saving if you don't like this changes. Um, one call out. Oh, this is another new one the databases. Now we can set up uh, automatic database backup. So we'll take the entire database of Hatchcom and back it up at a specific time interval. So every every 30 days here, it will make a backup of the database. And it will hold 10 copies of that database, at which point once it hits the next 30 days, which would be the 11th copy, it'll write over copy one. Right. And it'll just keep going. and each database that it makes, it, it gives it a specific folder and file name so you can you can know which database you're loading. Right. right. And just just a reminder there, if you do have Hatchcom 3, uh, you're not looking to upgrade anytime soon and you are not backing up your database, you really should be. Um, and if you need instructions on how to do that, just email us, webinars at jamesway.com and I can send you um, the backup instructions because those that is super important uh, in case something should happen to your computer. So again, just like Hatchcom 3, you can do a manual backup, change the location. This one's new. This is exporting uh, key information to a text file. So if you don't want to do the whole database backup, this will, like the data tables, which is stuff like uh, what machines are present, um, profiles, if you have ventilation configured, it loads the configuration, puts it to a text file. Because sometimes the database can be corrupt, and you write that database as a backup, then your backup is also corrupt. Right. This, 
you'll lose the information, but at least this way you just import that text file and you'll be back to normal operation just without the data. So is that also going to bring in the layout or would you need to? That's the layout. The layout and everything. Mm -hmm. So really important probably to do uh, once HashCom 4 is installed, running, you've set the layout the way you like it, you have your settings, do that right away. Oh, once, right? Well, once you do, once, when you make an edit to the layout, it automatically exports a text file. So yeah, as soon as you save it the first time, it should create a text file. So it, it does it in conjunction with the layout change okay. every time. So every time you have or, a layout change, it's going to do this. Yeah. Export of your base settings. It makes the most sense that way because when you For sure. when you add a machine, you need to add it to the layout. You're going to save that layout, and it'll automatically update this text file. That's genius. <laughs> I really like that. The next Andy. one is again. It's the again. You could do this in Hashicom three, but this is just a little bit easier to do. It's loading one of the archive databases that you you put in. So I can just load. I created one earlier. See how it hatch common that it gives the date it was created, so that's how it sorts through. I just open it, give it a few seconds. There, now it looks exactly the same. The only thing you're gonna notice it doesn't populate any information in the boxes. And so what you what you can do is you can go to this incubator and you can see the alarm screen for that range of time. You, you can see the set point report the set points were changed. Right. It's just a graphical way of moving through the data. The same with the graphs. You can go in and see the graphs. I don't think we had it running long enough to give us any data. Some, some data. Some tiny bit here. over there. But yeah, but the key one is this one. Hashcom still runs in the background. It doesn't open take over Hatchcom, it opens up in a separate instance, so you can still, while you're looking through the data, you can go in and you can change a set point, and then you can always come back. Right, so you can look back, back, see what you did, see what's happening differently, or see, yeah. or even make changes based on what you've done before, if you've done some manual changes. You just close that. Oh, there's a help menus. The Hatchcom manual is built in this. In the main screen, you have a help menu for the whole Hatchcom. But if you were to open up a specific screen, say I wanted information or help on this, it has a context sensitive help menu. There it is. There's our beautiful Hatchcom user manual. So all of that is in there. It is in a PDF uh, form, so if you wanted a reference, you could also have a printout copy of it. It is 120 pages about, so it is pretty large, um, but it is a wonderfully detailed uh, uh, manual. But you see, yeah, because I was in the machine state, it took me immediately to the machine state section. So I don't have to go in and, and look through and then navigate to where I want to be. It just immediately takes me to the most context sensitive stuff to where I want to be. Uh, is there one more thing is strictly related on ventilation? Is if I go into a machine state, again, it's it more matches the platinum display. But there's some icons and stuff that's a little bit different. Like one thing, instead of manual and automatic mode, we've changed it so it's like a little bit different to understand. Would be like uh, pressure mode and damper mode. So either operating the room off of pressure or it's operating the room off of damper. It's just some off of damper position. Damper position. Yeah. Right. So similar to how you can control your damper position mm -hmm. off carbon dioxide or off. Uh, yeah. An actual manual position. Yeah, it was just um, it was, in your profile. Yeah, brought in to match what the platinum machine does instead of right. manual. Now, does the newest Guardian align with these icons? Newest Guardian uh, software is that in the plan? 
Yeah, there's going to be an update version when this releases. There's an update to the Hatchcom integrated Guardian screen that will use these same icons. Right. So okay. then you have uh, congruency between everything. Right. right. So a little different from what you have now if you have Guardian, um, but uh, with the next touchscreen update for Guardian, this, this sort of discrepancy will be brought back together. So still have the ability to schedule there. That's the, this is a nice one too for the scheduling. Scheduling has been increased quite a bit. I wasn't, when, I, when I first did the schedule, we only had 10 points in a week. And that was the, the biggest one for people who were doing each back scheduling is 10 points wasn't enough. So now right. there's 40 points, or seven times 420. <laughs> Okay, so so same as before, I can change my set points, I can change my modes, um, and uh, change all of that there. Can I change my uh, my damper? Not damper. Not no. damper here. Um, but now you have four changes per day instead of two. Yeah, four changes per day. That's right, yeah. right. That's a better way. This button here will load the current set points. Okay. So if That's you're using, helpful. You're using it based off of what you have, you can uh, you can export this out to a schedule. Then you can import in other rooms instead. Of, so if you have four hatcher rooms, instead of having to go and set all these, and say two of them run the, the run the same frequency, two in one time, two on another schedule. Right. You can, Export it, a lot of the import it right over extra. to the other patch room. That's handy. Now, plenum. Plenum, that's, that was one that's changed as well, mostly on the schedule side of things, where once you enable it, you can, you can pick to run the plenum off of a pressure set point or off of fan speed. Right. You'll be able to set both of them, but whatever you have selected in the bottom is what takes priority. So I can slowly ramp up. So time two, I can ramp up the fan speed. Yeah. So ramp up, ramp up your fan speed towards uh, towards the end of your hatch, or ramp ramp up that pressure differential if you want to move a little bit more air through that cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that our consultants are still playing around with, uh, just how how exactly um, is best to do that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I know it's an area of interest for them that uh, that we change plenum pressures um, on the hatch and working with, you know, something like a hatch sensor or your hatch windows. You probably, probably noticed this number at the top. Uh, change two, that tells me that Monday has two schedules set. Okay. So before it was just one screen, so you knew what was set, but now you can have multiple changes. So if I enable Monday again, it changes to three. Um, fourth change on Monday, then it goes up to four. Right, okay. Sorry. That, I think that covers all the new stuff. All right, so what does everyone think? Do we like, uh, do you like the new interface? I know it's, it's different. It's probably gonna be a lot. Um, to adapt to and a lot to get used to for for those of you who have been using Hatchcom 3 for I don't even know how long it's been around but uh, for me I, I think I like it I think I can navigate it a lot better I'm definitely not the Hatchcom expert that uh, that some of you are though so open up to any questions uh, comments if anyone has anything um, if anyone is interested in getting a quote uh, pricing and the ability to quote this, we'll be releasing on Monday, on the 16th. Um, so if you would like a, a quote on it, um, you can just drop a little yes please or whatever you'd like in the chat uh, and Krista will get your names. Um, and we have your locations from when you registered uh, to our girls in Inside Sales who will do up a quote really quick. Uh, Tony, thanks for that, Tony. Um, our friend Tony from Australia. We've missed you on the past couple. Um, he feels that it's definitely different, which we agree. And uh, but 
I'm glad that you like it. Um, a lot of work has definitely gone into this, um, and I think it's a fun change. Uh, also a reminder, you guys saw at the beginning that I have a coupon code for everyone on the webinar. Just use Webinar Wednesdays. Um, those girls don't accept it or you don't remember, just drop my name. It'll be fine. I'll figure it out for you. <laughs> don't worry. Curtis and I will make sure you're all taken care of. Um, in terms of upcoming webinars, um, some of you may know because that we have launched an online parts ordering website, parts reference website. Uh, this website is designed so that you can order your parts right there if you're in Canada or the US, uh, the freight will be calculated for you. Um, you'll be able to place your order and within a couple minutes we have it here and it's into our system here. So for you to be comfortable with the site to learn the navigation on the 25th of April, so that's two weeks from now, uh, Pilar and Ava, who have really been spearheading the design um, and the launch of the parts website, will be here with me uh, in order to go over how to use it and how it works. Now for international customers, that website is also available to you in an international version. Um, the difference is that you would be actually doing a quote request instead of doing a direct order because it would need to come in to us to actually uh, get weights and volumes and do freight because international freight, you know, is a little bit more complicated. But the other neat thing about it is you can also use it to check part numbers. Um, it's all divided by the type of machine you have or by HVAC, so you can go through sections and, uh, and pick the exact parts you need. So do please join us for that. Um, it's a really exciting development. It's a really great reference tool for everyone. Um, and everyone is welcome, Canada, US, international customers, uh, to join in and learn about how this website works. Uh, Demetrio has a question. Um, he wants to know, can he use the same hardware installed for Hatchcom 3 and Guardian with the Hatchcom 4? Does he need a hardware change? No, there's no, if you already have uh, Guardian integrated with Hatchcom, there's nothing, you just need Hatchcom 4. And he doesn't need like a new fiber rock card or anything like that. All of those things will roll forward, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll still, if you go to your edit layout, when you configure, like Ethernet, it'll pick up automatically. But you might have you'll just have to go through the configuration of single, multi, and HVAC. But I think it all integrates. Yeah, and we do have I mean, there is a part that is uh, you know Hatchcom three to Hatchcom four upgrade um, without any uh, adapters or that sort of thing. So literally, you would just get the CD. Um, and of course, you can also request, or next time we have a consultant out, they can they can help you get that set up as well, or one of our technicians. Um, Tony, um, I will. I think Ronald's been working with you on your Hatchcom upgrades, so I will make sure that he uh, he knows that you'd be interested in Hatchcom Four. Ronald's actually sitting out there somewhere listening, so. Uh, he probably knows already. He's probably already working on it for you. Any other questions, guys? A little bit of a short and sweet one for you this time. Oh, I also forgot. So then our next webinar um, after the online store, which is going to be more going back to our actually informative webinars, um, is going to be on May 9th and on this one um, Philip is going to be here and Philip is going to be talking to us all about essential tools you need to manage your hatchery. Um, we're hoping to get some of these tools and we'll have them here so we can show them off um, but all the essentials that you guys really should have on site uh, you know for calibrations for maintenance of your machines, uh, for diagnostics, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so all of that will be discussed on May 9th. Um, so that's two weeks after the parts website. And registration is open for both of those. I think they're both on the website, jamesway.com 
uh, slash webinar dash Wednesdays. And of course, as usual, you guys will get the little e-blast that will be on the LinkedIn and the Twitter and the Facebook and whatever other social media we happen to have. All right, so if there are no other questions, I think we'll say goodbye for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope to see you all soon.